Welcome to Change Management and Version Control. Of all the series that we've done on buildamodule.com, I'm particularly excited about this one, and let me tell you why. First of all, the techniques that we'll cover in this series are applicable to most versions of Drupal. You'll be able to apply this to Drupal 6 and 7, and a lot of these concepts will apply to 8 as it rolls out as well. Also, the concepts and techniques that we'll cover are scalable. Not only will they help you if you're a single individual working on your own project, deploying your own project, they'll also help you work on a large team with a complicated workflow that involves many steps in order to get to a production site. And at every level, it will save you time, it will improve the stability of your code, and the maintainability of your code as well. The set of tools that we'll be covering in this series are considered some of the most powerful tools available for managing a Drupal workflow. And along with that power comes a level of complexity because a number of concepts are introduced that you may not be familiar with and that may seem a little bit difficult to wrap your mind around initially. But what's nice about the way that these concepts are introduced in this series is that they couple a very practical implementation of each concept. So you'll learn something new and you'll get to see it in action, and you'll get to practice it yourself. And by the end, a lot of these concepts will just be second nature to you, because you will know how they work in the real world. In the first part of this series, we're going to be exploring a version control system called Git. And we're going to apply Git in order to solve some fairly common workflow problems with Drupal. We'll look at how to use Git to maintain our website, to add new changes to our website, but still be able to roll back the changes. We'll look at how to create a central remote repository so that multiple people can work on the same code base at the same time and not lose any changes. And we'll also deal with some tricky topics like how to deal with a multiple server workflow where you need to push something from a development server to a staging server to a live server, but be selective about the type of code that you're pushing for various releases to your application or your website. Don't worry if you don't know what a production server is or don't know what a branch or a merge is right now. We're gonna go through each one of those in detail to make sure that you have a solid idea of not only what they are, but how you use them in the real world. Once you have a solid foundation in version control and you know how it can improve and stabilize your workflow, then it makes sense to talk about a Drupal module called Features. Features allows you to take things that aren't normally in code and move them into code. For example, there are some configuration options on your site that live in a database. And a database by nature is difficult to version control, and we'll talk about that later. With Features, what we can do is take certain things out of the database and move them into code and version control them. Not only that, but allowed multiple people to work on that code at the same time. So where it would be very difficult for one person to make a change to a Drupal component like a view and have another person make a change to the same view on a different server and merge those two changes, with features, a procedure like that becomes very easy. By using features to version control configuration changes, you also increase the stability of your website. So it becomes more difficult for various users to make changes that are destructive to your site without having a backup or without being able to identify where the bad change was made. By the end of the section on features, you'll be able to put into code virtually any critical component of your website. So you have a backup and you have a way to roll back changes. From features, we move on to talk about how to apply patches to contributed modules, and how to upgrade Drupal core and any contributed modules that you might be using. Now, if you have an immediate need to upgrade a Drupal installation, feel free to jump to this section. But we do use version control in order to demonstrate an alternate way to upgrade Drupal. And we also work through the process of integrating the upgrade with our version control workflow so that you can see exactly how you would push an upgrade from a development site to a production site. Once you're getting comfortable with version control, features, patching, and upgrading Drupal, then we're gonna wrap everything up by talking about a command line tool called Drush, 
which will allow you to speed up the process of virtually any aspect of what you've learned up until that point. For example, you can use Drush to update a feature, or you can use Drush in order to upgrade a module, and things are very speedy. And if you started this series new to the command line, then because we've been using git on the command line up until this point, you'll have enough familiarity and comfort level in order to adopt Drush into your workflow pretty easily. And you'll really want to when you see just how much time it can save. We're going to take a very hands-on approach to learning everything that we just talked about. So whenever possible, we're going to demonstrate how to use a particular tool or how to implement a certain concept. So by the time we get to the actual conceptual discussion, you'll have something to hang that on. Let's go ahead and get started by installing Git. And I'll show you how to do it on Windows and on a Mac.